Good morning, students. Good morning, math enthusiasts. Proving triangle congruence is the easiest concept in geometrical groups. If you have learned how to do this, it would no longer be difficult in providing proofs for our succeeding concepts. You need to recall basic concepts as we do proofs. It is important that you have understood and memorized the basic concepts. We shall also be using the two-column proof in our discussions. Please also recall the three postulates on triangle congruence. SAS, or side-angle-side -side postulate, ASA, or angle-side-angle -angle postulate, and SSS, or side-side-side -side postulate. The SAS postulate states that if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another, then the triangles are congruent. In the illustration, you can see that angle A is an included angle of the two sides AB and AC. These parts of triangle ABC are congruent to its corresponding parts in triangle DEF. The ASA postulate states that if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another, then the triangles are congruent. In the illustration, you can see that side AC is an included side of angles A and C. These parts of triangle ABC are congruent to these parts of triangle DEF. The SSS postulate states that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of another, then the triangles are congruent. In the illustration, you can see that the three sides of triangle ABC are congruent to its corresponding sides in triangle DEF. Let's start proving geometrical statements. The statements that we will be proving were taken from the book of Shom's outline in geometry. Suppose that in the illustration, you were given that angles 1 and 4 are congruent and angles 2 and 3 are congruent. The given here is the hypothesis of the geometrical statement and the hypoth I mean the, the what to prove here, which is to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDE, it's, yes, CDA, is our conclusion. In proving geometrical statements, it is very important that you do markings in the figure to guide you in the planning of your proof. Since angles 1 and 4 are congruent, these are the markings, or these angles are marked as shown. Since you were given that angles 2 and 3 are congruent, then you do markings as shown. Take note that the number of marks created were not the same with the previous pair of angles because these two pairs of angles were not given to be congruent. After doing marks on the figure based on what we were given, let us proceed with the planning of our proof. First, we look at what we are going to prove. We need to prove that triangles ABC and CDA are congruent. How are we going to prove that two triangles are congruent? Correct! We need three corresponding parts of the two triangles to be congruent. By looking at the figure, you were already, already given two corresponding parts. We need one more. What could possibly be that part? Correct, the common side. We can see that the common side of the two triangles are congruent by reflexive property. So, the two triangles are congruent by the ASA or angle side angle postulate. Now that we have already a plan, then we can start constructing the two-column proof. The two-column proof contains the statements and reasons. Your proof should always start with what you were given, although sometimes not all are to be enumerated immediately. Sometimes the given may be written one at a time. The first statement is, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 because it was given. Now observe if there are consequences of that given. If none, then you proceed on writing the next given. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 for the reason that it was given. Next, line segment AC is congruent to line segment AC or congruent to itself by reflexive property. 
Now, because we already have three parts, side, side, and angle, or, yeah, two angles and one side. Then, we have triangle ABC congruent to triangle CDA by ASA postulate. Now that we are done with what to prove, we have already demonstrated that the geometrical statement was true. So we write QAED at the rightmost corner of the bottom of the table. As an additional principle, remember that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. This means that if two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding sides and angles must also be congruent. If three corresponding parts of the two triangles were already stated to be congruent, then the two triangles are congruent, and then the remaining three corresponding parts of the two triangles must be congruent because, well, there are six parts in a triangle. We could use this principle as a reason for a statement that a pair of corresponding parts are congruent after proving that the two triangles that they belong to are congruent. Take note of the word after. It means that you cannot use this principle if you have not yet proved that the two triangles that they belong to are congruent. Since this principle is long, you may use an acronym as a reason. You may use CPCTC, which stands for Corresponding Parts of Congruent Triangles are Congruent. Some resources may be using CACTC, which stands for Corresponding Angles of Congruent Triangles are Congruent. Or CSCTC, which stands for Corresponding Sides of Congruent Triangles are Congruent. Instead of CPCTC. Again, remember, CACTC are for angles and CSCTC are for sides. Let's have another example. Suppose you are given that the hypothesis of this geometrical statement is that line segments BF and DE are perpendicular, line segments BF and AC are perpendicular, and angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent. And you are to prove that line segment AF is congruent to line segment FC. To do this, we need again to understand what we are given. Think of its possible consequences while doing marks on the figure and make a plan based on what you are to prove. First, we were given that line segments BF and DE are perpendicular. Is there a consequence with this statement? Yes, it will make angles DBF and EFB to be right angles because adjacent angles are complementary if exterior sides are perpendicular to each other. Right angles are formed so that angles 3 and 1 are complementary angles and angles 4 and 2 are complementary angles. Recall that complementary angles are angles whose sum is 90 degrees or a right angle. Now we were given that line segments BF and AC are perpendicular. So what is the consequence of this statement? Yes, it will make angles 5 and 6 congruent because perpendicular lines form right angles and all right angles are congruent. We were also given that angles 3 and 4 are congruent. What is the consequence of this given? Well, before we think of its consequence, we first look at what we are to prove. Sometimes, writing immediately the consequences of what we are given may be unnecessary for the proof. We need to prove that line segments AF and FC are congruent. Since this is what we are going to prove, we may mark exclamation marks to also aid us in our plan of proof, especially during a quite complicated statements. To prove that these corresponding parts are congruent, we may use CPCTC. However, we still need to prove that the two triangles here are congruent. To do this, we need three corresponding parts to be congruent. Recall that angles 5 and 6 are congruent. We can also say that a common side 
BF is congruent to itself by reflexive property. We need one more corresponding part. Remember that angles 3 and 1 are complementary and so we do with angles 4 and 2. We can say that angle 1 is complementary to angle 3 and angle 2 is complementary to angle 4 by the definition of complementary angles. This is where we can make use of angles 3 and 4 being congruent. By complement postulate, the complements of congruent triangles are congruent. So that, angles 1 and 2 are congruent. We now have three corresponding parts of the two triangles that are congruent. Angle, side, angle. And so, the two triangles are congruent by the ASA postulate. And by the CPCTC, line segments AF and FC are congruent. We are now done with our plan using deductive reasoning. We may now start writing the two-column proof using inductive reasoning. The first statement is that line segment BF is perpendicular to line segment AC, which was given. This becomes our first statement because it is more convenient than the other. The second statement is that angle 5 and angle 6 are right angles because perpendicular lines form right angles. Angle 5 and angle 6 are congruent because all right angles are congruent. Now, line segment BF is perpendicular to line segment BE, which was given. And then recall, angle 1 is complementary to angle 3 and angle 2 is complementary to angle 4 because adjacent angles are complementary if exterior sides are perpendicular to each other. Angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent, which was given. And by complements of congruent angles are congruent, angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. Line segment BF is congruent to line segment BF by reflexive property. Now, since we have three parts, number 9, Number 8 and number 3, triangle ABF is now congruent to triangle CBF by ASA postulate. Finally, line segment AF is congruent to line segment FC by CPCTC or CSCTC. Since we have demonstrated the proof, then we write QAD. The third example is quite different from the first two examples. Prove that if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent and a diagonal is drawn, congruent angles are formed between the diagonal and the sides. Observe that we are given a sentence. This time, we first determine the hypothesis and the conclusion of the statement. The hypothesis is, the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent and a diagonal is drawn. And the conclusion is, congruent angles are formed between the diagonal and the sides. You may now proceed in constructing an illustration of the created hypothesis and conclusion. You have to label your illustration in order for you to make a restatement of your hypothesis and conclusion in terms of what you are given and what to prove. In this case, you draw a quadrilateral, which is labeled A, B, C, D. And then, identify the opposite sides that are congruent. Line segment A, B and line segment C, D are congruent. Line segment A, D is congruent to line segment B, C. And a diagonal is drawn, which is line segment A, C. Now, you are to prove that congruent angles are formed between the diagonals and the sides. So, these are angles 1 and 4, angles 2 and 3. So, you have to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. If you can prove this restatement, then we have proven the geometric statement in a sentence form. So, this is the restatement. Proceed with the marking of the figure. Line segments AB and CD are congruent with one line marking. Line segments BC and AD are congruent with two line markings. 
We made different markings because the two pairs of line segments were not given to be congruent. We need to know that angles 1 and 4 are congruent with one line marking. We also need to prove that angles 2 and 3 are congruent with two line marking. We add exclamation marks to show that these pairs of angles are what we need to prove to be congruent. To prove that these pairs of angles are congruent, we need to prove that the two triangles that they belong to are congruent. We already see two pairs of corresponding parts congruent. We need one more. We see line segment AC, which is a common side and is congruent to itself by reflexive property. Thus, we can say that triangles ABC and CDA are congruent and that the remaining corresponding parts Angle 1 and 4 are congruent, and angles 2 and 3 are congruent by CPCTC. We now start with a formal proof. The first statement is, line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD, which was given. Line segment BC is congruent to line segment AD, which was given. And line segment AC is congruent to line segment AC by reflexive property. So we now have three parts, side, 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 so that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA by SSS postulate. Finally, angle 1 and angle 4 and angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent respectively by CPCTC or specifically CACTC. So, we have now proven that if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent and a diagonal is drawn, congruent angles are formed between the diagonal and the sides. As a recap, in proving geometrical statements, you need to follow the following steps or techniques. Step 1, start with writing the hypothesis and its consequences in the two-column table that you have created. Step 2, Look at the conclusion and look back to the hypothesis and its consequences while creating a plan. Think deductively by thinking backward from the conclusion to the hypothesis. Think of the possible statements and reasons. Step 3. Fill in the two-column table containing your plan in Step 2 by thinking inductively. Finally, Step 4. Add QED at the rightmost corner of the bottom of the table to imply that you have already proven that the geometrical statement is true. Also, you may be asked to prove a geometrical statement in a form of a sentence. It is important that you know how to determine the hypothesis and the conclusion of the sentence and make effective restatement of the sentence by constructing illustrations and making labels. This is all for today. Have you learned something from this video? Please do not forget to let me know and let me know how you feel. Please subscribe and share this video for the other students who may need this discussion as an aid for their learning. Thank you very much. Remember, math is easy to learn when one learns with enthusiasm. Bye!